ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله all praises due to allah we praise him and seek his assistance we seek refuge with allah from the evil within ourselves and from the evil of our deeds Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide him. Yet whomever he allows to go astray, none can guide him. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone. He has no partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. Ya ayyuha alladheena amunu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except in the state of Islam. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطَعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and speak the truth. He will direct you to do righteous good deeds and will forgive your sins. And whomsoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, he has indeed achieved a great achievement. أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam, today our khutbah is about being in the service of others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Imran described our ummah in a specific way. And he said, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ you are the best nation that was ever brought forth للناس, for humanity, for mankind. And the scholars say, whenever you see an-nas in the Qur'an, it is referring to Muslims and to non-Muslims. So this verse is saying, you are the best nation that was brought forth for the world, for Muslims and for non-Muslims alike. Which means the verse is saying that the good that comes out of the believers should permeate into society, should affect everyone, should affect the Muslims, and it should affect the non-Muslims as well. For until recent years, the khair that was coming out of the Muslim community only went back to the Muslim community, and it didn't go outside of that. And so the community at large never felt the impact of what the Muslims were doing. There was one, one time here in America, there was a masjid that was being built in a new neighborhood. And the people in the neighborhood didn't want the, the traffic and the other things associated with the masjid, so they opposed the construction of this project. And they took it to the, like the city council or city hall, and everyone presented their arguments. So a Muslim uncle got up, and he thought he had a strong point. And he said, we have a right to build a masjid here. We have been a part of this community for 25 years. And then a woman, a non-Muslim woman, sincerely got up and she said, you have been here for 25 years? I've been doing soup kitchen for 30 years and I've never once seen a Muslim volunteer and help. And what that community made as a mistake, the good impact that they have never reached anyone else. It just stayed within the Muslim community. But we are the best nation that was sent for and nas for everyone, for Muslims and non-Muslims. So everybody should feel the effect of Muslims around them. In a hadith that is Hassan narrated by Tabarani, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ahabu nasi ila Allah, anfa'uhum lin nas." The most beloved people to Allah are the most beneficial to an nas again, the most beneficial to people, Muslims or non-Muslims. And one of the and one of the important things to understand in Islam is that the religion can be broken up into two parts, into ibadat and muamalat. The ibadat are the acts of worship that you perform. And the mu'amalat are your dealings with people. How you behave with people, assisting one another. And we need both to succeed. The, some of the extremes we see in our communities, we see one person completely focusing on the ibadat. So with the salawat and everything, he's right on point. But whenever you speak to him, it's an abrasive encounter. It's, he's rude, he's harsh, he's crude in behavior. Because he focused on al-ibadat and he doesn't put any weight or any importance to it, al-mu'amalat. And we have the other extreme in our communities. Someone who has nothing to do with the prayers and the rituals, with the, 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 the ibadat, the worship between them and Allah Azza wa Jal. But they're extremely nice to everybody. 
And they'll tell you that I'm a good person, I should go to Jannah even if I don't pray. And they're missing the balance, the healthy balance. You have a relationship with Allah, but you also must have a good relationship with human or the rest of humanity as well. So this hadith is so important because it emphasizes that. That the most beloved deeds to Allah. And if you were to ask people, take a guess, they will tell you Qiyamul Layl, they will tell you Quran. They're going to focus on ibadat. But the most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the most beloved of people to Allah azza wa jal, anfa'uhum nas. The most beneficial of them to other people. So that could be by teaching. And teaching here things in the, re- the dunya or the deen. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with having a lot of knowledge that's beneficial, that even if it's in the dunya, share that with others. Pass it around immediately. Feeding people, clothing, sheltering, marriage. By marriage meaning facilitating marriage for people, helping people get married. And we are so lacking in this area. We have so many young women who are trying to get married, so many young men, and there's nobody helping making that connection whatsoever. And people will tell you some ridiculous things. I don't want to help people get married because if they get divorced, they'll blame me. Why would they blame me? Yeah, 10 years is going to come look you up and blame you. But just effort, things like that, being beneficial to others. Then the Prophet ﷺ continues. And the hadith is a very powerful hadith. وَأَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ And the most beloved deeds to Allah, سُرُورٌ تُدْخِلُهُ عَلَى مُسْلِمٍ a happiness that you enter upon a Muslim. The most beloved deeds now. So the most beloved people are the most beneficial to people. And now the most beloved deeds is a happiness that you enter into the heart of a believer. Or you lift or remove a difficulty that was upon them. Or you settle a debt on their behalf. Or you basically you feed them. They're, they're, in, they're hungry, and you give them some kind of food. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, an amshiya ma'a akhin li fi hajatin hab, yani, For me to walk with a brother of mine concerning an issue, an affair of his, something he needs to take care of. But notice the Prophet ﷺ said, Wala an amshi, yani, For me to walk with my brother in this affair. And what's beautiful, the scholar said, you don't have to successfully... Uh, finish the task or, or fix the problem for him or anything for you just to accompany him and that's why sometimes someone might need to talk to you and you don't have a solution for them and they might know that you don't have a solution for them but they just need to talk and just by them talking somehow alleviates or decreases the problem in, in their minds or in their hearts masjid <laughs> And for me to walk with my brother in an issue or, an, or some affair of his is more beloved to me than to make i'tikaf. And that's when you stay in the masjid and you never leave. Fi هذا masjid In this masjid, and what masjid are we talking about? The Prophet ﷺ is talking about his masjid, al-masjid al-nabawi, where the salah is multiplied by a thousand. For me to walk with my brother trying to fix an affair or help him with something is more beloved to me then to make i'tikaf in this masjid for an entire month. Whether successful or not, whether you walk with him for a few minutes or for a few hours, more beloved to the Prophet ﷺ than making i'tikaf in that masjid for a month. And then continues, وَمَنْ مَشَى مَعَ أَخِيهِ فِي حَاجَةٍ And whoever walks or meaning assists his brother in an affair or in an issue, حَتَّى يُثْبِتَهَا لَهُ Until now it's taken care of, ثَبَّتَ اللَّهُ قَدَمَهُ يَوْمَ تَزِلُّ الْأَقْدَامِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep his feet firm on the day when the feet are not kept firm, meaning on the day of resurrection. This is the weight and the importance of being in the service and being in the aid of others. A sheikh tells this story about a man who came to him. And this is a true story. A man came to him and this man owned a factory. And he tells him, uh, my factory is not making any profit. So I am considering shutting it down. So I'm not really making profit, it's just basically, it's just covering its expenses. So the sheikh asked him, how many workers, how many employees do you have in the factory? He said 80. He said, these are 80 homes that you're helping sustain and keep open. And if it's a man and his wife, and if every home has about three children, then these are 400 people that are receiving provision from this factory. 
And then the Sheikh said to him, Don't you think that the factory continuing, meaning remaining open, is the greatest profit with Allah? Another way of looking at things. Don't you think this factory remaining open and 400 people benefiting from it, isn't that the greatest profit with Allah? It's not just about monetary profit in this dunya. It's about people, it's about helping people, it's about being in the service of others. Studies that were conducted by universities here show that uh, they were, gave some people money and told one group to, to go buy themselves something nice. And they told the other group to buy something for someone else. Then they tested the level of happiness after that experience for each group. And the group that spent the money on someone else reported a higher level of happiness than those who just bought themselves some kind of trinket. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Balad, فَلَقْتَحَمَ الْعَقَبَ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْعَقَبَ فَكُّ رَقَبَ أَوْ إِطْعَامٌ فِي يَوْمٍ ذِي مَسْغَبَ يَتِيمًا ذَا مَقْرَبَ أَوْ مِسْكِينًا ذَا مَتْرَبَ So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, فَلَقْتَحَمَ الْعَقَبَ Meaning, He never اِقْتَحَمَ الْإِقْتِحَامُ الدُّخُولِ فِي الْأَمْرِ الشَّدِيدِ يعني when you enter into something that's difficult. So Allah is saying, He did not enter al-aqaba. And al-aqaba is the word that's used to describe a mountain. Some of the mufassirin said, al-aqaba is a mountain in the hellfire. في جهنم والعياذ بالله. Others said it's 70 layers of the hellfire. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, wanted to say, that this person did not attempt this difficult mountain, this difficult task. He did not push against himself, fighting against his desires and his own needs and his lusts. So as a, an example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he did not attempt al-aqaba. And what would make you know what is al-aqaba? He compared this task to climbing this mountain. What is climbing this mountain? Fakku raqaba. Setting free a neck, meaning finding a slave and setting them free for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Prophet ﷺ commented many, on many hadith on the excellence of that. Or, أو إطعام في يوم ذي مسغبة Or to feed on a day of مسغبة يعني a day of starvation and severe hunger. So this is like climbing that difficult mountain. And he did not climb that mountain. What is climbing the mountain? Setting free a neck. Or feeding on a day of severe starvation or severe hunger. Yatiman the maqraba, an orphan, the maqraba that's related to you. O miskinan the matraba, or a poor person, the matraba. And matraba, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma says, who al matruh fit turab. It's like to show you, matraba is, uh, turab is uh, like sand or soil, or the dirt. And this person is to that level that they're on the dirt now. And so the word was named after that, matraba. So he's in a very difficult situation. There is a true story that happened in, in one of the Muslim lands where this man tells it himself. He, owned some, he owed, owed someone seven million riyals. And he had one million and his business failed. So he told the man, I'll give you one million and then I'll work on giving you the other six million. And that man refused. And in that country, when you owe someone, they throw you in jail. So he said, the man refused and he threw me in jail. He said, I was sitting in jail with other people who were there because of debts. So I started speaking to each person. This person, how much do you owe? 50,000. This one, 70,000. This one, 100,000. He said, I took my checkbook out and I started writing these people checks for that amount. And tell them, just go. And they would call the officer and they would show the check and they would go home. And he said, free a whole group of people. And he remained in there. So the officer told the, the person in charge, and that person in charge called him in and said, you're in jail because you owe people money, but you're now settling other people's debts. So he explained the story. I didn't have the seven million, and I offered to give him the one, and he refused it, so I'm in jail. But the one million that I have is enough to get these other people out of jail, and I got them out of jail. The story impressed the man so much, he took it to the, one of the princes in the region. And then that man asked to meet with him personally. And when he explained the story, he gave him a check for the seven million and he told him go. And, and he got the debtor and he gave him the money and he said go free. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahu fi awni al-abd ma kana al-abdu fi awni akhi. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at the aid and the assistance of a, of a, of a slave or a, a servant, so long as that service, servant is in the service or in the assistance, at the assistance of his brothers. And of course, it means sisters as well. And the Prophet ﷺ also said, Ar-Rahimun, Yirhamuhum Ar-Rahman. Those who are merciful, they receive mercy from the most merciful, Ar-Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know the story of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, after he became the Khalifa, he would leave immediately after Fajr. And one day Umar ibn Khattab followed him. And he sees him going to this old house. Stay for a while and then leave. So later on, Umar goes to this house and knocks. And there's an old lady there. So he tells her, who is that that enters upon you every morning? And she said, I don't know who he is. So he tells her, what does he do? She said, يأتي كل يوم يكنس بيتنا. He comes every morning. He sweeps our house. This is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. This is the Khalifa with responsibilities. He comes every morning and he sweeps our house. وَيَحْلِبُ شِيَاهَنَا And he milks all our goats. وَيَصْنَعُ طَعَامَنَا And he cooks our food. And then he leaves. Another example is that of Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. When Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah passed away, schools closed, the market closed, the whole city shut down so everyone could attend his funeral. And everyone was saddened. But one of the amazing things is that a Christian man came and he was in tears. And so the people asked him, why are you crying because he died? And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah wrote volumes refuting Christianity. Why are you crying? He said, I'm not crying because the man died. He said, I'm crying because all the good that he used to do in the city, no one's going to do it anymore. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم من جميع الذنوب فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his forgiveness indeed those who ask for his forgiveness shall prosper الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد الحمد لله there are a number of organizations in this city that uh, يعني in a good way make you proud of the work that they do that are reaching out and they're helping everyone they're helping Muslims they're helping non-Muslims outreach in the barrio is one of them that's responsible for feeding a lot of people Muslim Hands for Humanity, also feeding people and taking care of things. And we have a masjid that many people are speaking about. And those who have visited have been impressed. And they return for a second and others for a third visit. And that is Masjid al-Tawheed. And today we have the Imam of that masjid, Imam Qasim ibn Ali Khan. And the work that they do, and those of you who have visited them, you see, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase them in good and assist them to do better. But they will have shelters. They even have classes, teaching skills, sewing. They do so much great work. So if I'm not going to do that work myself, then I'm going to do my best to support those who do good work. And you can go and with your own eyes and see the kind of work that they do. But this is something that's important for us as Muslims. It's, imagine if the Muslims, they focus so much on constantly giving back. Constantly doing their best to impact society. And then someone tries to say on television that Muslims are violent or this and that. People will immediately disbelieve that. They'll say, I've seen Muslims. They're the most helpful. They're the kindest people. So there's no way I'll believe this information. Masjid al-Tawheed is one of those people and we don't overpraise them in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today the Imam is with us and he is going to need a few minutes of your time after the Salah. And we understand the importance of this. And we know what they do, and so the equation is simple. We know how much we have to support them, inshallah, after the salah. Rabbana la tazik qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahmatan innaka anta al-wahhab. Allahumma ja'alna min aghna khalqika bik, wa min afqari ibadika ilayk. Allahumma amla qulubana hubban laka wa khawfan minka wa rajaan fiik. Allahumma aati nufusana taqwaaha, wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaaha, anta waliyuha wa maulaaha. اللهم اصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا لأحد من خلقك اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين فاللهم أبرم لهذه الأمة أمر رشد يعز فيه أهل طاعتك ويهدى فيه